2020 elections are rapidly approaching, and with that, every individual must consider what is best for him and her or their self in terms of who they should vote for and whose policies are the best. In this case today, self-interested voting, we have a very particular individual who has come across this issue. Fang is con currently conflicted between two candidates. The first governor, Governor Date, represents a party that seeks to raise taxes on the wealthy to support programs for the poorest of the country's citizens. On the other hand, Senator Full represents a party that seeks to slash taxes on the wealthy who provide large donations to her party and her campaign. Fang, because of her salary, is within the top 10% of earners and therefore would be sub subjected to these tax slashes as proposed by Senator Full. Fang knows that voting for Full would mean that she would be supporting the other 90% of, of citizens. That would be the morally correct decision. Today on The Gray Zone, we will discuss questions pertaining to Fang's situation and whether self-interested voting is as selfish as it may seem. Hello listeners and fellow conversationalists, this is Brianna Guo and welcome back to The Gray Zone. Today we are joined by Joy Yoon, Dana Smiley, and Emma Wamsley. We're going to go around and introduce ourselves and say what our favorite ice cream flavor is. I'll start off, my favorite ice cream flavor is actually gelato, tiramisu gelato. Hi, I'm Joy, and my current favorite flavor of ice cream has got to be mint chocolate chip. Hi, my name's Dana, and my favorite ice cream flavor is coffee. And my name is Emma, and my favorite flavor of ice cream is birthday cake. So to start off, let's go over some of the stakeholders. Our immediate stakeholder in this case is Fang, as well as her family, her two college-bound children she has to consider regarding her financial situation that are ultimately going to decide which decision she makes. Another main stakeholder are the candidates in this presidential election, which are Governor Date and Senator Full, as this is their career and their futures that are on the line here. As well as the top 10% of earners, if candidate Date goes through, there will be a tax increase and a tax cut for Senator Full, as well as the top 10 are beneficiaries, and Fang is in the top 10%. The bottom 90% are also stakeholders, as more support programs under, like health care under Governor Date's policies will ultimately benefit them. Additionally, we want to consider the businesses who donated to Senator Full's campaign and will ultimately benefit from Full's policies. And lastly, everyone, um, the people living in the United States, and this is also a great modern day connection as we are experiencing upcoming elections and voting for those elections. Great. And then next, on to some of the principles and values that were seen in this case. A central idea we're kind of working with today regards acting in favor of your self-interest versus in favor of the common good. We'll additionally be considering personal impact versus the impact of a politician uh, can have on the people of an entire country. As well as financial interest. Also, how does the democracy work? What is the role of the voter in the system? What's the role of the politician? We also want to consider cultural morality, particularly as we are all living in the United States currently. We'd like to consider whether or not it is more of a value of the community to vote in your own self-interest or to vote for the common good. As well as Fang's duty to her children versus the duty to society. Another idea we'd like to consider is that in this case, Fang herself had experiences with healthcare and how it benefited her in her past. And so questions regarding well, her feelings of empathy for the earners in the bottom 90% and if her emotions could potentially drive her decision making. And finally, we'd like to consider the ideal of politicians being virtuous individuals devoted to promoting the greatest good for the greatest number. Great. Now that we have that basic understanding of where our opinions and decisions have come from in this case, let's look to the study questions. Would Fang be hypocritical if she voted for Senator Full? Does that matter, morally speaking? Now, this is a really interesting place to dive in because we can see some ob objective hypocrisy in the language of the case. With Fang recognizing that voting for Governor Date for president is the more morally correct decision, and yet she is still tempted and even leaning towards voting for Senator Full instead. 
Is this a case where an immoral decision is morally permissible? This is an immoral decision that is morally permissible because, even though there is hypocrisy, she is valuing her family's well-being and future health, which according to fem- feminist care ethics, a morally permissible decision. Yeah, on the one hand, Feng focusing on her relationships and her family under the ideas of feminist care ethics may be arguably permissible. However, feminist care ethics pertains to relationships beyond just the family that extend to the greater society as well. So arguably, Fang's decision may not be as morally permissible if we believe that she holds a greater responsibility to to society. And from the case, we know that Fang herself has experience with the value of health care and realizes how you know these programs being offered to her actually can uplift more people and she should see herself in the larger picture of society as well. Wow, that was a really interesting discussion and it's got me thinking. Is it morally wrong to vote in your own interest at the expense of others? You know, that's a really good question because for me at least it makes me question the role of a voter in a democracy or in society, right? Shouldn't a voter be voting in their own self-interest and at the end of the day the, you know, the idea or interest that's most common amongst the people will prevail. Because at the end of the day, if Fang does end up voting in favor of the 10%, the rest of the 90% voting for date will be the majority and therefore the candidate that's best for society would be elected into office. However, the same way of thinking cannot equally apply to politicians and their roles in society. While a voter can be acting and voting in their own self-interest, a politician should not be acting in the same way. This ties back to what I what Plato said about having the most virtuous people in government. These virtuous people are ones that act in favor of the common good without considering their own self-interest. He called these philosopher kings. So under the idea of what a democracy democracy should be should ideally be, it's not morally permissible for representatives and politicians like Governor Day and Senator Full Senator Full to be acting in their own self-interest, just like it may be for Fang to vote in her own interest. Through this lens, Senator Full, you know, in the case it explicitly says that her policies support those individuals that support her campaign. The idea of campaign finance is really prevalent in her running for president. She's not a virtuous citizen. She doesn't take into account the common good for society and her policies, simply what will help her get reelected. In that way, Senator Full is not demonstrating a very virtuous character. However, coming back to the question, is it morally wrong for Fang to be voting in her interest at the expense of others? Why must it be Fang's responsibility to protect other vulnerable populations in society? Fang, in voting for her own self-interest, is taking into account what's best for her children and what's best for her being able to pay for them to go to college. Can we expect all individual voters to do what they think is best for society you know they have to again they have to take care of their families can we expect all voters to be as virtuous as politicians need be just some more questions to consider isn't that the purpose of us having a republic filtering the most virtuous people to the top a democracy runs an ideal democracy should run fine if everyone votes in their own self-interest because at the end of the day the majority or the 90 percent will hopefully be electing Governor Dayton into office. Coming back to the question, so is it morally wrong for Fang to vote in her own interest? Arguably no, but is it morally commendable? That's not necessarily true either, as she's not thinking what's best for the other 90% of people. Yeah, those are some really great ideas. And indeed, we ought to do all we can to uplift others. And when we're talking about voting, yes, it would be nice, you know, you say in an ideal democracy, the 90% would overcome the 10%. But in in the society that we live in, because issues like voter disenfranchisement are so prevalent, voting for what's best for society um, is really key. And according to the case, Fang thinks that voting for date is the morally correct decision. And maybe voting is an action like any other to be morally evaluated on its own merits. But is there a way to align self-interest and common good? Are the two ever truly mutually exclusive? 
You know, I think this is a really fascinating point to explore because if we're returning to this initial question of is it morally wrong to vote in your own interest at the expense of others, that's, you know, definitely assuming that voting in your own self-interest will be at the expense of others. And perhaps we ought to reframe this issue in, in the long term or by understanding that if you vote in favor of the bottom 90%, even though you're in the top 10%, all of society will be uplifted. And so in the case of Fang, she will be helped. It just won't be as direct as all of society will be uplifted instead of her immediately receiving the boost that she would receive from tax cuts under Senator Fulm. Especially in the United States, your own self-interest is aligned with the interest of society. Uh, you know, is there a false antagonism set up here? It appears that Fang hasn't always been on the top 10%. You know, she herself has a mortgage and she's needing to pay for children's college and she's relied heavily on health insurance to avoid going even further into debt. She of all people should recognize the potential between reconciling both the common good and your own self-interest and she should be more understanding than others that in helping the 90%, everyone will be helped and uplifted in the long run. So while I definitely uh, see and, and agree with Joy's perspective about it being, you know, morally acceptable for an individual to vote in their own self-interest and that uh, politicians should be the one not acting out of their own self-interest, I would argue that even on the individual side of things, voting in your own self-interest and voting at the um, voting for the common good or for others is not a mutually exclusive choice. Yeah, I think Dana brings up a really great point that your self-interest and the common good aren't always mutually exclusive, right? In today's current situation with COVID-19, people are realizing that, for example, the government money getting handed out and a lot of people's rents being halted, maybe if you're in that top 10%, it doesn't necessarily directly affect you. In the long run, society being able to continue and the economy continuing to move forward does help you in the long run, right? And so that's just to apply it to our current situation as a way in which what's best for society ends up helping you as well. So having acknowledged that the common good and self-interest are not mutually exclusive, what do you do when you have conflicting moral imperatives such as in Feng's case? Great question. Is something ever morally correct? Can we cannot necessarily condemn Fang for wanting to vote in the manner that protects herself and her family, but for the individuals who are running in office, can slash should they be held, held to a higher standard to do the best for the greatest number of people? Senator Full's policies benefit those who donate to her campaign, which is self-interest. The people in the government are the ones who are supposed to be creating policies for the greatest number of people. Should an individual be blamed for not effectively checking the government? This is a circumventing responsibility and a conversation of more systematic issues of a corrupt politicians and campaign finance. Perhaps one is more morally praiseworthy or con commendable, but we cannot condemn Fang's actions. This leads us into the next question, more about the intent behind Fang's actions. Is it permissible to vote for a candidate even if you think that's not the morally correct decision? I know this is interesting because I think that we've established that there's a bit of ambiguity in the definition of what moral or especially in this case morally correct means. But it's interesting to consider why an individual would vote for somebody who, in their view, is morally incorrect. You know, we have Fang over here who recognizes that Full is perhaps a less virtuous candidate, but is still tempted to vote for her for the sake of herself and her family's well-being. Fang may decide to vote for the less moral candidate, but that doesn't necessarily make her decision immoral or morally incorrect. Because as we've previously established, we cannot say that voting in your own self-interest is necessarily immoral. But again, why is responsibility being placed on the individual to check the government? Why should Fang be held accountable to vote in a virtuous manner when the politicians themselves are not necessarily acting virtuously? Right. Dana brings up some really great points. And I guess in an effort to answer how do we decide if Fang is making the most moral decision, this question mandates us understanding her intention, right? Clearly, we know that Fang is leaning towards voting for full, but is it because she's focused on, you know, the well-being of her family and her kids' futures? Or is it because she's simply looking for a a tax break. Another part of this question that I personally am wondering about, and it ties back to what Dana said about 
the morality of the politicians themselves is that it seems Fang is making a two-part decision in who she's voting for, right? She's looking at the morality of the policies themselves, if it helps the 90% or the 10%, if it's helping her family versus society, right? But also the morality of the politicians themselves, right? Dana was saying how just because a politician's policy may be moral, it doesn't necessarily make them moral, and vice versa. Just because Senator Full's policies may help Fang in this instance, it doesn't make her a moral candidate because she is simply representing those who cater to her or simply catering to those who help her campaign. And so I think for me, at least when looking at this question, it's important to recognize the intent of the politicians in the long run. I think it's dangerous for Fang to be voting for a politician that isn't representing her because they really have their best interest in mind, but rather they're thinking about their self-interest first. Great point. How much of an obligation do we have based on our capacity to help? Fang is in the top percent, but however, she is not exactly a millionaire. You know, Emma brings up a really interesting point that is really closely tied to the writings of Peter Singer and this idea of if we have a duty to do all that we can to help others. But Fang could really use Singer's arguments as a way to, in fact, justify voting for Senator Full over Governor Date because Singer asserts that it is morally permissible to do things such as save for a child's education, so long as extra money is not going towards buying excessive wardrobes or going to the opera or pursuing other luxuries. So under this line of thinking, if Fang's intention genuinely is to invest in herself, invest in her family, and invest in their futures by paying for these necessities, then she can in fact justify voting for Senator Full. However, in Singer's writings, he also really emphasizes that you can you should give back everything you're capable of, right? And if Fang is investing or saving up for her children's educations. Is she saving up for a college with a tuition of $70,000 a year or maybe $20,000 a year, right? These are also luxuries that she can even afford to consider. Fang voting for governor date may mean that her children get a few less Christmas presents a year, might not be able to go to the most prestigious college that they want, but she helps ensure that other families' children get the health insurance they need. They get the proper education that they may not get if she had voted for Senator Full. It may also be interesting to look at the outcomes and predictable effects of a candidate as well. We can look at the certainty or the likelihood of each candidate actually getting their policies passed. Looking to Governor Date and Senator Full, they've had different rates of success in the past. Governor Date has had much success enacting their policies, while a bill that Senator Full endorsed in terms of tax cuts failed to pass. Another idea that Fang should take into consideration when making her decision, in the language of Jeremy Bentham, we can consider it fecundity. It's the question of how likely the politician's policies will help Fang in the future. While Senator Full's policies right now do help her, since Full's ideas are based in her own self-interest, she's equally likely to perhaps change who she's representing depending on who supports her campaign in that moment. As for Governor Date, her intentions seem very lodged and based in wanting to help what's best for society. And so just the likelihood of the politicians continuing to represent the people that they currently are is another idea that Fang should consider. Those were all of the study questions, but we had some other additional ideas that we wanted to explore a little bit further, including the relevance of this case to our current day. There are elections coming up this year, and this case serves to be very prevalent in the decisions that some people may be going through right now. Is it better to vote in the interest of your family or in the interest of society? And through discussing this case, we hope to have revealed that maybe those interests aren't mutually exclusive. And, you know, it's really difficult to discern whether choosing one or the other is is really the, the better idea. And at the end of the day, it might just be that doing what may seem not particularly helpful at the moment for your family, but is in fact better for society, might in the long run just happen, just so happen to be better for your family in the sense that, you know, with the virus occurring right now, a lot of people have found themselves in situations that they could not possibly have forecasted for, you know, financial situations that they had not predicted from the year before. And in such situations, 
having a backup plan, say, having the policies that governor date, you know, the theoretical governor date would have put into action is in fact beneficial for people who had not seen themselves in need of those tools when they had been voting a couple years earlier. Another aspect we wanted to look a little bit more into is cultural morality, and that's to say that different cultures have different ideas of what is moral. You know, in the U.S., we have a very strong focus on our natural rights and, you know, the individual. But in Scandinavian countries, for example, Denmark, they have a much more of a classical Republican or a communal attitude where doing what's best for the common good is, in fact, commonplace and more socially acceptable. Yeah, so just to expand on what Brianna was saying, this dilemma that Fang is facing right now in this case wouldn't, we're just trying to say that it wouldn't necessarily be as prevalent in other countries where acting in favor of the common good is so commonplace. But since we're in the United States and we have such a focus on natural rights and you know individual rights, it's just a different way of considering it. That was it for this week's Gray Zone. Thank you for listening. If anyone has com- any comments or questions, please email us at thegrayzonepodcasts at gmail.com and we will respond in our next segment. If you're interested in having these discussions more regularly, we invite you to have ethical discussions in your daily life. In addition, all the cases that we are discussing are from the National High School Ethics Bowl and it's really easy to get involved. Thank you for listening and we will see you next time on The Gray Zone.